Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports, and today we're taking a look at a new 3D printer that I was sent by Sovol. Uh, this is the SV01 Pro, and it is designed to be sort of something in the same ballpark as like an Ender 3 version 2, and that's a little bit pricier than just like a basic Ender 3 or Ender 3 clone. However, it offers you so much more. And in the time that I have been testing this out over the last couple of weeks, this has really just become my default printer for pretty much everything. It just works really, really well. Spoiler alert, this is a fantastic printer and it works really, really well, especially for 2A type prints, printing things like uh, grips, stocks, receivers, braces, things like that can all be done very, very easily with this machine. I'm very happy to report. And let's go ahead and go over some of this machine's features and why it has become my default printer in the last couple of weeks. Starting with just the basic design of the printer, it is an all metal chassis, so it is extrusions throughout. The thing bolts together very, very solidly. But some of its basic features and what separate it from some of the other similarly priced models include that it is a direct drive printer. You notice it doesn't have a separate mounted extruder and a Bowden tube for that filament to go through. It is direct drive. So your cold side extruder is also your hot side extruder, all built into one unit. That allows you to use a wider variety of filaments, including flexible filaments like TPU, which really don't tend to behave particularly well with Bowden tube designs. At the back of the machine, it is a dual Z-axis, or excuse me, a dual screw Z-axis design. So normally on something like an Ender 3, you only have one Z screw, usually located on the left side. With this one, you have two, which means that you're getting an even lift of the gantry, or an even lift of this, every single movement, which means you're gonna get less wobble, you're gonna get less potential for uh, tilt. Occasionally these can tilt where this side, the left side can lift up more than the right side, and it can kind of be a little cockeyed, and that can cause problems. You have a filament runout sensor here that is mounted loosely because it needs to be able to move in every direction. You do have a very simple top mounted filament holder here. It works fine for its purposes. Now, for the bed itself, you've got a large print surface. Uh, I'll put the actual print specs here, and I'm going to provide a link to this machine as well so you can see the actual specs straight from the manufacturer. But it has a flexible magnetic bed, very, very flexible guy here, that I initially didn't like very much. I was having issues with my prints sticking. They would not stick. I would set up the, uh, the Z-height perfectly. I would perfectly level the bed using their bed leveling setup. This is still a sprung bed. So you still do have the normal four points to adjust there underneath. Um, and we'll go through an auto leveling uh, to show how that works. But I was just running into issues where the prints just, especially like fine details, small areas, would not stick terribly well. Uh, so after a little bit of trial and error, I just started wiping it with alcohol in between prints. So just a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just gave it a quick wipe with a paper towel. That eliminated my print detachment issues. As I mentioned before, this does have auto leveling and it does it using just a simple BL touch here on the side, nothing too crazy. I actually like this setup more than something like the strain gauge that's on my AnyCubic Viper. I got an AnyCubic Viper pretty early on, and you know, I never had that much luck with it. I didn't love that it used that strain gauge, mainly because mine broke uh, pretty early on, and I guess this was a pretty well-known issue with the Vipers, with the AnyCubic Vipers, but they sent me a new strain gauge 
you know, as soon as I reported it, but it was still coming from China. So my machine was out of operation for about, I think maybe six weeks. Uh, this is simple, simple BL touch. It works really, really well. You have good cooling setup. You have your, uh, your hot end cooler there. And then you have your actual part cooler here on the front. Just a very simple single vent design. Uh, it comes with a 0.4 nozzle, very basic, basic, basic stuff. Nothing here is too crazy. You do have hand adjustment of the belt tension, but it is a plastic adjuster. That is something to look out for. On my Ender 3 version 2, I broke this guy. Uh, it, I over tensioned it or something crept uh, in use, but it actually broke. This one seems to be a much beefier design, but it is something I'm looking out for. I've also recently been reviewing a G-Tech Thunder printer, and that has these hand adjustable uh, belt tensioners as well. However, they are made of aluminum. So that might be a nice upgrade, uh, Sovol, if you decide to, if, if we decide that this is problematic, if it does end up showing any signs of wear, premature breaking, might find a way to do those in aluminum. But Let's do some test prints. Let's see how it runs. Let's do a demonstration of the auto leveling feature. And uh, let's go from there about my final thoughts. So this is probably the 10th sort of functional uh, test print that I've done on the uh, SV01 Pro. And it is reliably boring. It seems to print really well. It prints into spec. It works with every material I've thrown at it uh, between PLA, PLA plus and TPU. I arguably am not using any exotics because that's not what I do with my printing, but this thing prints really, really well. It's gonna get a little bit loud because I've turned it on, the fan is gonna be on. Try to do this to avoid the glare. However, you can see this uses a touchscreen setup. You can automatically do your warm up just by hitting PLA and that'll warm it up. It warms up really well. Let's just do a quick warm up here. It's gonna turn the fan back on. One thing that I love about this machine is if you go into advanced settings, yes, and steps, you can tune it. You can tune your e-steps through the touch screen. That is something that I love about the old Ender 3, that you can tune it through here. You don't have to connect it to a laptop or anything else. You can just run your test and then go in there and dial in whatever that new uh, number is gonna be to calibrate things like your steps. That is huge for me. The ability to update this stuff on the machine itself is absolutely critical, in my opinion, for a machine like this. I don't want to have to use a laptop to tune my machine. That's another reason why I do not like my AnyCubic Viper. You have to tune the E-steps through a laptop. Other than that, you have a ton of settings that you can adjust here. You have your basic printer info so you can see what your firmware is. Let's go ahead and just show sort of how the auto leveling works. So you go in, you hit leveling, and it does it, that's it. It's gonna go through and it's going to level, it's a 16 point leveling, so it's gonna do a grid of four by four. I'll run through it pretty quickly, it's pretty easy to do uh, regularly. So if you decide, or if you note that you are having bed adhesion issues, 
that have or that don't have to do with the bed surface itself. Uh, like if you're having issues with um, if you're having issues with beds or with objects not sticking to the bed, and try some alcohol. Um, oh, I skipped one step. So that brings us to the main leveling screen. That's where you can adjust your primary Z height, and then you do auto leveling and auxiliary leveling. Leveling. The auxiliary le auxiliary leveling is really useful because that's how you adjust your screws. So you can go to each of the different points and you manually adjust these so that they're all where they need to be. And then you can go through and then you do the auto leveling, which as you can see, there's my 16 grid showing what adjustments it's needing to make to be perfectly level for the machine. So run through the whole process, but if you've seen it on a level before, it's nothing too crazy or exciting. It just goes through auto homes and then it'll go through and adjust at 16 points and make those recordings of what it needs to do. Let's go ahead and do a sped up version of that. When choosing a file to print, it's really as simple as going to your home. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, you have a night mode and a day mode for the screen. The day mode is harsh, so I keep it in night mode. But select file and you select your file. You can see a test print, the SOV fuzzy dong 10. So that's a 10 hour long print of a, uh, of a M walk dong style uh, foregrip, but done with a fuzzy skin. And we will see how that looks. Decided to run that same test print this time with a fuzzy skin enabled, just to see how this would do with those fine movements. Holy cow, that turned out great. So overall, my thoughts on the uh, Sovol SVO1 Pro this is a fantastic printer. Um, it really is one of the closest printers that I've seen and that I've tested in a long time that really is as basic as just build the machine, load up good filament, and start printing guns. Like, it really is that good. It's spitting out really well calibrated parts. Flow rates are great. The precision is what it needs to be. It just, it works really, really well. So again, overall, after doing about a dozen or so test prints, uh, getting some of my slicing uh, settings dialed in, which really was pretty simple with this. This did not require anything crazy other than changing some of my retraction settings from a Bowden tube setup to a direct drive setup. But this thing prints reliably, it prints well, it has some great quality of life features over other machines and price breakdown, we're going to post a price breakdown on whether it's more cost effective to buy something like this, to buy the Sovol S, uh, SVO1 Pro versus something like an Ender 3 version 2 and adding upgrades like a direct drive, a second Z axis, um, and other features that would make it a comparable machine. And we'll see which is more cost effective. But for me, just based on this thing's reliability and ease of printing, this has become my default printer. Many thanks to Soval for sending this over for me to test out and uh, stay tuned for more. Obviously there will be many, many more test prints and functional prints on this machine. Thanks for watching.